Hi everyone, happy Wisdom Wednesday. Um, I'm back today talking about something that I have faced, Kabuki's here <laughs> coming to visit. Um, something that I've been dealing with my whole life, basically, and I'm having some really great moments of integration and epiphanies and realizations around this. I think it's something that everyone deals with, everyone faces at some point in their life, whether it's once or whether it's every day. And this is I, this idea of looping and getting stuck on a fear or a thought or um, a belief. And often it's a thought that turns into a belief. Um, maybe it wasn't a belief initially, but because we've maybe looped over this and got stuck on this one idea, it's turned into a belief. So this idea of looping is something that I've kind of come to face and realize that I do a lot. Um, it's been helpful having a conscious partnership where I have a partner who can help me see this and help me reflect on this. Um, he's been pretty instrumental in helping me see that. Um, but I think it's also my own growth and um, everything I've kind of gone through in the last year has really helped to wake me up to a lot inside of myself that I did not know was there. That was more at the subconscious level and it's now coming up to the more conscious level. So some of the things that, for example, that we all might loop over is a really good and clear example is money. So we often can get stuck on this idea of like, I'll never make enough, I'll never have enough, um, living in this like lack consciousness. And it's very easy to slip into because of, I think also just the society we live in, um, where we're constantly in a, where we live in a consumer culture that's constantly encouraging us to buy more and be more and do more. And I find that energy is really strong in cities. It is strong everywhere. The reality is we live in a capitalist society. So it's even here in my smaller city that I live in, I'd say a little stronger in cities where there's more density, there's more hustle energy, there's lots of opportunity, but it can also feel really overwhelming. But um, beyond that is something that we just all face. We all face this idea of um, feeling like lack and not enough. And sometimes we get stuck in our minds and we stray from our heart and we get stuck in fear. And what happens is we develop a thought and we can choose whether to hold on to that thought and make it like concretize it in our own selves. Or we can say, no, that's just a thought. Um, I'm going to let that kind of like pass away like clouds might pass through the sky. And this is where meditation can be really helpful because we can, the chaos in our minds doesn't necessarily go away, but we have a really, we've developed a finely tuned skill to observe the chaos so that it, again, it's like a cloud passing through the sky and we don't attach to it. But if we aren't in a regular practice of observing our thoughts um, um, and we aren't in a regular practice of being in our hearts and asking what our hearts want, Often those thoughts we we kind of um, attach, they kind of get stuck to us, like Velcro gets stuck. That's how I see it. And they become a belief. And then when things become a belief, they become an action. And it's how we end up living out our life from, for example, out of this place of lack. I don't have enough. I'll never have enough. Um, I'm being screwed over by someone. I'm being screwed over by society. Um it's very real that like there are problems in society that are causing uh, marginalization and there are exceptions to this where I think we want to be careful. Um, and my example of this is grief, um, grief of a loved one or grief of the loss of something. We have to be careful if, you know, we're in the place of being a friend or we're um, in some sort of supportive helping position and we maybe have a friend that's looping over something and they're grie grieving um, because what really happens is it's very normal for the mind to feel like it's um, it's been... It's like a puzzle where the puzzle pieces have been taken apart and it's trying to put the puzzle pieces back together so they fit and it can take years to do that. It can take a really long time for the for the mind to make sense of what's happened after you've lost a loved one. So often what we do is we loop and we talk about maybe the death of someone or something we're struggling with now that they're gone or... Um, you know, that how the person died or things they said right before they died and like going over things over and over again in our minds or with 
a loved one. And we have to be really careful that we're not trying to give someone solutions for this, that we're actually um, just supporting them and maybe even just staying quiet. And this is something that I don't think our society has actually taught us enough about grief. And um, we're not we're not educated. We want to give a solution. We've been kind of taught to give solutions. And there are definitely things that you can do for someone when they're grieving. But one of them is maybe not, let's move forward. Let's get you to the next step. Um, maybe not the best way to move someone through grief. So that's that's an exception to this. But I think when it gets to things like money or things about fear that we're not enough or we're not producing enough or we're not... Um, will never be the person we want to be. I think that there are ways to even work with ourselves without an outside presence that we can get to that next place. Um, so I think one of the things, just a second, I'm just going to pull up some notes here that I have. So one of the things is creating a new loop. So um, if I'm not making enough money, well, how can I do that? Um, the loop has become the subconscious belief over time that you have concretized, like I said, in your conscious mind, and we create new beliefs. What we're doing is creating new affirmations. And this is where I just think like the power of affirmations is incredible. Um, and we can move to this place of conscious venting as well. So with, with affirmations, um, we could say, let's start out with the problem or the negative affirmation. I'll never have enough. What you could turn it into is I live abundantly, I will always have more than enough in every aspect of my life, and I will live fully financially from here on out. I will take the steps I need to feel financially secure. And even if you just think this, you don't even need to say it out loud, that's an example of creating this new affirmation and this new belief. Um, before that step, you can also do something called conscious venting, where you state the problem out loud um, and you, you, you state the problem out loud, you state what you didn't get when you faced that issue and what you felt like you needed to get. And then you go to the next step of like, this is what I need. So what I didn't get, what I didn't, what I didn't get, what the problem is, what I didn't get and what I need. And I find, um, I did a little aspect of this and version of this few years ago, um, in a workshop and it was really, really helpful and I would recommend trying it on your own. Another way is journaling. Journaling is really, really helpful, um, when it comes to getting stuck on a problem and we get stuck up here. It's helped me a lot, especially if I don't have someone to kind of lean on and no one's really around to hear me out. A journal is really, really great. So I recommend kind of taking the time to, to writing it down because you'll get a new perspective on what that problem is. And you might start to see that, hey, that's not such a big deal as, as I thought it was. Um, the final thing I would say is sharing your problems in community. Oftentimes we get stuck with our partner and the same person we see every day. And of course they can hold space, but eventually it does get to a point where they've been kind of hearing the same issue over and over again. And for whatever reason, there may be a chance when, or a time when they can't really hold space. And it, it might be helpful to get a new, fresh perspective. And that is why I hold women's circles. Um, I'm actually hosting uh, my first one in Guelph on July 19th in two weeks. It's a Friday from 6.30 to 8.30 at Studio Shibui. And that's on 11 Quebec Street. And it'll be an opportunity for female-identified women to come together and to just kind of be in our most, most authentic space and share what's on our minds. Um, we'll be talking a lot about the intuition and how to tap into the intuition, especially as we move through eclipse season and through the astrological changes that we go through every month. Um, and I'll be talking a little bit about some of the things I've learned to tap into my own intuition um, and tapping into my own, our own inner silence. And I think women's circles are a really great way of moving out of that place of isolation and getting stuck in our minds to then come into society, the public, and share what you're dealing with so that you can see that, hey, it's maybe not as big of a deal as I thought it was. So that's all I have for conscious uh, venting today and for looping and for affirmations. I hope this has helped. Um, to think about some of our life problems in a different way. Hit me a message if you have any questions and we'll talk to you soon.